Everything the Jacksonville Jaguars have fought for this season hangs in the balance while they await their key diagnosis to star quarterback Trevor Lawrence. We got all that and much more on today's episode of Locked on NFL. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, football fans, and welcome in to another episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast, breaking down all the biggest stories from around the National Football League here as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Big thank you to all you everydayers out there making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget you can subscribe and follow always for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes. And of course, it is Tuesday here on Today's Locked on NFL. So you've got Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on your favorite social media. Myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson, NOLA, N-O-L-A, here to break down the biggest stories around the NFL. Today's episode of Locked on NFL brought to you by friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked on NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed on today's episode we're going to be taking a look at our yike and our like including officiating but not necessarily for the reason that you might think how many coaching jobs are going to be open at was uh, in terms of head coaches around the nfl after this season but first a monday night thriller luke spoiled with yet another quarterback injury everything that jacksonville jaguars have played for so far this season now awaits the further notice or further diagnosis rather of quarterback Trevor Lawrence who seems to have suffered an ankle injury and ended up having to leave the game this isn't looking great for the Jacksonville Jaguars who are building something really really great over in Jacksonville yeah the vibe around the injury is concerning right because um Trevor Lawrence in the pocket gets stepped on by an offensive lineman and he goes down and is immediately frustrated. And it's one thing to see a player in pain. Some injuries that have shorter recovery times hurt more acutely at the beginning. So sometimes they can be in a lot of pain, but ultimately be OK. It's like you don't want to see that. But ultimately, like that's that's one thing. And another thing entirely is seeing a player frustrated yeah. because they feel like something bad has happened where they know immediately you go back to Bengals had Jake Browning and you go back to Joe Burrow yep. on the sideline in front of the nation, trying to throw with that hand injury and immediately saying, Nope, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, that is the kind of thing that really sticks with you. And you had that with Trevor Lawrence throwing his helmet, extremely frustrated with that injury. Uh, was able to walk not under fully his own power, but was able to walk with help to the locker room. They are saying sprained ankle. That's per Tom Pelissero, and they have an MRI coming that you, dear listener, probably know about before we uh, did <laughs> recording this. So that's going to be the thing that we're waiting on if you are listening to this early enough uh, to not have that info yet. Um, in the meantime, I guess it's CJ Beathard time in Jacksonville for however long that takes. That said, if it is a normal ankle sprain, not a high ankle sprain. And depending on the grade of the ankle sprain, there is a chance Mm -hmm. that it's just a couple weeks. There's also a chance that it's like four weeks and maybe they have them back for the playoffs, but by then have they lost their handle on the division with both the Colts and Texans coming in right up behind right there in the AFC South one game back, both of those teams. So who knows what happens in the next few weeks? Of course, the Jags are going to want him back sooner rather than later. And we just saw a big tale of heroism with Mahomes last year, playing through a sprained ankle against Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, so maybe he is going to make a decision like that. Uh, we're going to have to see just what the severity of that injury is, if that's even a plausible thing to do. And then if Lawrence is like crazy enough to do that, which I have no idea of that about him at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be a tough one. I mean, it, it it's also going to be tough to keep him off the field. I imagine. I mean, you know, you look at the next upcoming games for, um, for Jacksonville, they've got the Browns who are currently starting Joe Flacco. They've got the Ravens. They've got the Bucks, Panthers and Titans. There's an argument here in favor of the Jacksonville Jaguars saying, Hey, look, just take it easy 
to get you ready for the playoffs. They don't have the toughest schedule remaining. They have a tough opponent in the Ravens. But outside of that, like it's a pretty the games that they'll have are pretty much they're 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 winnable games, right? Even with a backup quarterback and seeing how well Trevor Etienne played, how well you Evan Ingram getting his first touchdown. Um, you know, uh, you've got you know Calvin Ridley. Hopefully, a Christian Kirk who was also hurt in this game is able to come back for you and and, and be an impact player as well. Uh, there's a lot to watch here. And, and look, we're not gonna you know blow smoke and sit here and like wax philosophic on on Trevor Lawrence and and the Jacksonville Jaguars when we don't yet know that the diagnosis. But certainly something to keep in eye out on as this continues uh to move forward because this would be a massive yeah. loss for jacksonville who's who was building some good momentum over in the afc and a huge shakeup to the afc playoff picture because right. right now there are two teams at nine and three and two teams at eight and four all leading their divisions mm -hmm. so the one through four seeds are wide open yeah depending on who comes in the thing is, you have a wild card situation with a bunch of teams at seven and five and a few teams at six and six now, including Cincinnati, who won tonight, as well as the Texans and Bills uh, and at seven and five or the Texans are at seven and five. But the Texans are actually on the outside looking in with the Steelers, Browns and Colts all also at seven and five and having tiebreakers Um, the Broncos and Bills, my apologies, and the Bengals all one game out of that at six and six. So this is a crazy tight race yeah. and there is a world where jacksonville loses trevor lawrence for two or three games they torpedo those games they lose all three of those games and end up on the outside looking in not even making the playoffs man that would be, they're two that would be losses rough. they're two games behind ahead of a te teams that are not in the playoffs right now right right so yeah and some that have gotten i don't know how much you can take for granted down the stretch yeah yeah, right. I, like, I don't know how much you can take for granted here. That game against the Ravens will obviously be pivotal for seeding. Um, but it's going to be, there is going to be a pressure to rush this because it's an ankle sprain yeah, or a hamstring. If it were a, you know, something injury, else, if it were an, a, that, an yeah. offhand elbow injury, that kind of thing. Um, you'd, it'd be a different thing, but because it's an ankle sprain and there is precedent, whether you think it's correct or not, there will be an external pressure to rush this. I don't want the Jags to do that. Obviously, like the safety of the player is going to be way more important than like playoff seating to me all the time. But it, that's really easy for me to say because I don't have any skin in that game. Right. Um, and how the Jaguars respond to that, this is going to be one of those character revealing moments. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, if you look at the the bottom four seeds, the the Jacksonville Jaguars, Pittsburgh Steelers, Indianapolis Colts, and the Cleveland Browns, those are four play four teams in the seven team AFC playoff picture right now that are currently like in position for the playoffs. All four of those teams might be starting backup quarterbacks next mm -hmm. week with uh, Kenny Pickett undergoing his uh, his his uh, surgery that's probably going to keep him out for a couple of weeks. Steelers hope to have him back around uh, week 18, according to Ian Rapport. We know that Anthony Richardson is not available for the Colts. We know that you know Deshaun Watson is not available for the Browns. And then now, of course, you throw in the potential of Trevor Lawrence out next weekend as well. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting down the stretch because you're talking about all those six and six teams, including, of course, the Cincinnati Bengals, who won this game 34 to 31 in overtime. Jake Browning leading the way. First ever undrafted player, according to ESPN Sports and Info, with over 350 passing yards and at least 85 percent completion rate. He had an incredible game. And so I don't want to overshadow either just the remarkable game that the Cincinnati Bengals played without Joe Burrow to go into Jacksonville and get this win, whether or not Trevor Lawrence was able to finish the game. Uh, remarkable stuff uh, so far for the AFC playoff. So turmoil in the AFC playoff picture, but also upcoming turmoil this offseason. How many head coaching jobs will be open after this season? Luke and I are going to give you the over under and discuss which way we're leaning as we continue on with today's episode of Locked in NFL, part of the Locked Up Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On NFL is brought to you by Game Time. It's the best place to get last minute tickets, especially if you are trying to get a last minute uh, gift for someone, perhaps this season, maybe an NFL game in January, week 17, week 18 game. You want to sneak one in right at the right at the buzzer, but it is way too late to get good prices through traditional methods. That is what game time is for last minute deals, flash sales, and they're not going to mark up the price to absolute hell. They are there to help you 
get the tickets that you are looking for at a reasonable deal with their zone deals. You can pick the section and game time will figure out the seats for you for an average of 18% savings. That's pretty crazy when you're talking about NFL ticket prices and the game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off of your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N. And NFL for $20 off. Download game time to it. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, continue on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. There were five head coaching positions open last year. Mm -hmm. I believe very strongly that there will be more than five open after this season. So I prepared a little over under for you, my friend. Oh boy. Oh boy. Six and a half. Over or under the number of head coaching jobs that will be open after the 2023 season? So we already have two with yes. uh, the Vegas Raiders and Carolina Panthers. Mm -hmm. boop, boop. We talked a little before the show and we came up with eight other teams that are in danger. Mm -hmm. So to hit that over, we would need five of these. Yep. Um, those teams are Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. New England. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, Tennessee Titans, mm -hmm. Los Angeles Chargers. Mm -hmm. If the Atlanta Falcons don't make the playoffs, we could have some conversation. People pretty mad at Arthur Smith. People pretty mad at him. Washington Commanders feel like they're headed in a direction. Mm -hmm. Your New Orleans Saints, I was surprised to hear you say that. Very and well in that maybe conversation. Maybe the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking through these, these teams. And some of these feel like it feels like Tennessee is about to move on. They feel like they've been sort of gearing up to go to their next chapter for a while and just yeah. sort of waiting for an excuse. And with those coaches that are always good, not great, kind of the first time you're three and seven is when the, the guy gets ousted, mm -hmm. even though he's made the playoffs, you know, however many years in a row. Um, the Chargers also feel like Staley's a bit of a dead man walking. So I That's can gotta happen. comfortably do those two. Honestly, I hate to say it, but Billy B, man, in New England, I think that's, that's going to be a, a retire with grace, maybe, situation. Maybe. But I don't know if they want to stick with the old man through like the next iteration of the rebuild. Yeah. And what is going on in New England is so dreadful. So we, I don't know. We already got three there. But what do you think about your uh, Saints? I want you to explain that one. Yeah, this one's a tough one. And maybe this is a little bit more like the fan base than it is the organization. The organization really values continuity. But when you have a head coach that has effectively led the way to mediocrity so far, uh, being consistent and having cohesion is subscribing to further mediocrity as you move forward, right? Like that's the risk. It's one thing to be consistent. It's one thing to be cohesive when your team is really good right and that's what the saints kind of tried to do from 2026 in no, 2026 who am i uh 2006 through 2021 they tried to maintain cohesion continuity collective nature all those other things because they were maintaining a winning roster uh and a winning team right now it doesn't feel like they're headed in that direction the saints were seven and ten last season they're five and seven so far through this year with five games left to go maybe they end up seven and ten again maybe they end up ten and seven who knows but it's a lot of that just like you mentioned the good not great coaches right and i think dennis allen is one of those good not great coaches 20 and 45 over the course of his uh career so far that's the lowest win loss percentage of any active head coach in the nfl right now uh, across like a career of coaching and everything and so i think that if the saints were to kind of face plant here over the course of the last five games that that conversation would have to happen now the saints could also say hey we run you know four out of five down the stretch dennis allen's our guy moving forward let's just change offensive coordinator and see if the system gets better that way absolutely a way for them to go because they didn't enter the red waters of the oc uh oc search last year but that might cost dennis allen this year moving forward. So we'll have to see it all depends on how the season wraps up, but it's certainly sure. um, heating up and certainly the chatter is very loud here in New Orleans. We have placed every NFC South team on this list. Isn't that remarkable? I mean, Carolina what, put themselves there has. to be yeah, fair. One of the, yeah. We, we did not need to be do that with Frank Reich, but they decided to, to have a quick hook there. So I'm looking at it. I'm thinking of the other three teams, unless somebody sneaks into a stupid seventh seed, 
we kind of get two of these teams that are going to make the playoffs and are going to be asking some real questions, right? Good point. Yep. Like, so I feel like if you go, we, we have the, the Billy B graceful retirement. That's actually a firing, but we say, we'll let you go out on, you know, with your head, with, with dignity, you have your Mike Vrabel thing. You have your Brandon Staley thing. And two of those NFC South teams, we did it. And we don't that's even seven. have to yeah, worry yeah, that's right. about including uh, Carolina and, and Las Vegas. Sorry. That would be seven. including Carolina and Las Vegas. So then, then that's our, our seven. And we did the over here and you don't even have to worry about what's going on in Washington with Ron Rivera. Right. That feels like it's ready to move on as well even though I don't think that that's true. And I think Rivera has had a lot to do with the turnaround that Washington has had as an organization. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit weird for him to like captain all that turmoil and then get ousted right as things feel like they're sort of steadying. But perhaps that is part of it where you go, you are our guy to, to sail us through stormy seas. And now that we've pulled into port, we get somebody else to actually bring us to the promised land. I wouldn't agree with it, but I would get it. And I think I'm in the same place with Eberflus in Chicago personally, mm -hmm. where, I mean, look, when you got Ryan Poles in, it's not like the, the ownership didn't know that Ryan Poles was going to do this with the bears, right? You, you, you hired him and you let him hire Eberflus off of your list or how, however that worked. And you committed to this slow, long burn of a rebuild that drives your fans completely insane. Yeah. You stepped in that already and firing, uh, Matt Eberflus isn't going to get it off your shoe. Right. So like, right. You can get another lame duck to captain the rest of this rebuild while the team, you know, wins few, like five games or whatever for the rest of, of, of this, of forever. Um, but Jeez. I don't feel like that solves anything for them. But I, I know that Lauren Cox disagrees with me over at Locked On Bears. I know that he I don't know, Lauren. A, a much more nuanced take about like, no, but Eberflus himself has done a bad job even after considering what he's working with. Yeah. So I guess that's fair, but I also feel like, I don't know, like you're in the middle of a rebuild. You get a new coach that becomes a new rebuild. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No matter what, at that point, like that's always been my thing. Like anytime you change a quarterback or you change a head coach, you're in a, you're rebuild. back to square one. It, it, there's, there's no, there's no retooling. There's nothing. Cause everything around you is changing in that case. Even if you yeah. keep the rest of the roster consistent, the way that quarterback plays, the way that coach coaches changes everything about what it is that you're doing so it's right. always it's always a rebuild in that situation i would and, say like it's the a really two difficult teams... sell for the next head coach too because like hey do you want this 100%. broken shell of justin fields that we like ran yeah. over with a yeah. steamroller and some draft capital that may or may not pan out right like in, in, in the <laughs> right. crap shoot of the nfl draft yeah like, i don't know it's gonna be tough to sell we ruined everything and we got darnell right for it please come work for us <laughs> meanwhile you've got the los angeles Chargers over there with a bright shiny justin herbert saying come, exactly come to the come to the beautiful saying, city we just had of a los angeles Guy. Yeah, you know, so it's going to be very interesting. But I don't know. I, yeah, I agree. I think like two of those NFC South teams that don't make the playoffs, big time conversation questions are going to happen there. There's always some surprise too. you know, the right. one coach retires after winning a Super Bowl or retires after a big like playoff the, disappointment or yeah, fired the playoff, playoff game. That's that's so maddening that the, like I, I we were talking before the show about like the, this would be like the mike mccarthy right yes where mike mccarthy has a meltdown they lose to like the falcons in the playoffs uh in the in the first round like and card, everybody yeah. gets and, and jerry jones loses his mind and uh, on a on a long 3 a.m bender decides to give that <laughs> phone call to mike mccarthy uh coming up next we're going to take a look at our yike and our like for the week starting off with nfl officiating it stinks but i got bad news for you it's not going to get better anytime soon. We got that coming up for you as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a weird time, you might say, an unprecedented time. It has been for some years now. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of certain antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season we have had in quite some time. Look, stuff happens Stuff that you you might not even see coming, like uh, your kid getting sick or something like a bacterial illness, a UTI, respiratory infections, stuff just goes around. And sometimes you might need an antibiotic that you might not have on hand. That is where Jace Medical comes in. And in particular, their Jace case that has five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial infections, including some of the stuff that I already mentioned, as well as sinus infections, skin infections, and others. Stuff can happen to anybody, and you got to be prepared for it. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It gets reviewed by a board-certified physician, and then your medications get delivered right to your door. 
and you don't have to wait for the supply chain or whether or not the pharmacy has it in stock, or if you can even get to a pharmacy, depending on where you live, that can be difficult as well. Once again, go to jasemedical.com, J-A-S-E medical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off of your order. All right, everybody, wrap it up today's episode of Locked on NFL with our yike and our like. And Luke, I'm going to kick us off on the negative side here today with my Let's yike. Let's go. Um, NFL officiating stinks. It, it has for a long time. But that's not why it's my yike, Luke, because we knew this already. My yike is that it's not going to get any better. You're not going to remove human error from the referees from officiating all that kind of stuff. It's just not going to happen. There's always going to be the split second, this split second, that, and mm -hmm. we'll always notice it. My actual least favorite part about NFL officiating is all of the former NFL officials who come out and say, Oh yeah, no, that should have been a call. That's probably my least favorite part of it. All. <laughs> and then my other least favorite part of it is when NFL officiating itself comes out and says, yeah, we messed that up. We we missed that call. <laughs> Sorry. That should have been a penalty. Sorry. Mama yeah. threw up. <laughs> you know? And so, like, I, I, I hate that because there's no accountability at all. There's no, you know, marching that official up to the podium and having to answer questions. That's what then, I want. Let that's me what put I these really officials want. in front of New York media. Yeah. Let's have some fun here. Don't give me the pool report. Yeah. And, Let me and have looks, the New York Post ask that guy questions. Yeah, right. You actually, you actually put something out on on social media about how like the real way to fix this is to make the referees matter as little as possible. Yes, to sweep the them game. under the rug. That's that's yeah. my point. It's impossible. Refing is impossible. There yeah. will never be a good ref. There nope. will never ever ever be a good ref because it is not possible to be good at that job. It is too difficult to be good at, and that's not to excuse the NFL for putting people in those positions that aren't full time employees having a frankly slap on the wrist accountability system where, oh, now you can't ref in the Super Bowl, but all the refs are bad. So someone has to. Somebody's got to do it. This isn't fixing the issue. <laughs> um, that and A lot of people don't know about that, but yeah, they do have like a grading system for refs. And if you grade out poorly, you don't get to ref in the playoffs. But the way that it works, like the 12th best refing crew will ref a wild card game. Yeah. So you're going to get bad refs in the wild card. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, enjoy That's, that. And it, yeah, it's a great system. Um, so that's my egg. That's my egg. Yeah, but you you just can't make those split second judgments perfectly accurately, often from dozens of yards away, the same way that we get to when we can pull up instant replay right away. Yeah, uh, there needs to be a system by which we can either utilize instant replay to overturn calls that are egregiously wrong. Mm -hmm. without turning it into this whole thing about challenges and slowing the game down to a crawl and all that stuff. You have to find a logistical way to do that. And anything else you can do to make it so that we see refs less. Yep. Nobody's ever been happy to have a ref on their TV. Nope. No. Nope. Outside of that ref's mom. Outside of that ref's parents. And you know what? Maybe even not. Speaking Maybe of Aaron Rodgers, not everyone has a great relationship. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll move on. Speaking of an official's decision, but it actually is my like, but not for anything to do with the refs. All, all refs sure. are bad. Um, <laughs> uh, my like goes to Dom DeSandro, chief of security for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, uh, in a frankly nightmarish afternoon for the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles fans do not have a lot to hang their hats on, uh, except for just repeating game scores at people, which is not <laughs> conversation. Um, Right. That's that's the level of inter of intelligence that a parrot has. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Dom DeSandro in this game, uh, there was a, a late hit on Devonta Smith out of bounds by Dre Greenlaw and Dom DeSandro got in the face of Dre Greenlaw. Dre Greenlaw kind of looked like he was trying to like pinch his cheek or did some swipe. It really him. does look like he just pinched out his cheek. He was cheek. trying to like, do something, I, was, yeah. I think, funny uh, and <laughs> say like, yeah, cute you think you're gonna come at me that kind of thing right. gets tossed from the game so does dom DeSandro over the whole thing dog heck yeah uh <laughs> you as the chief of security having nothing to do with the football operations of the philadelphia eagles got a key defender on the other team kicked out you had to get kicked out too guess what eagles take that trade a hundred times out of a hundred oh, uh, way to fall on that sword take him take him out with you 
That rocks, man. Instigate. Always instigate. I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Speaking of instigating, I'm going to instigate with you for a moment on my like. Um, and I, I'll try to keep it brief, but uh, 514 yards, Luke. 514 yards is all we need until Tyreek Hill is the first 2,000 yard, 2,000 yard receiver no. in the NFL. And, no. and I want it. I want no. it. I want it for biracial king, Mike McDaniel. I want it for that Miami Dolphins team. You're betraying I LSU. I know. I know. This is supposed to be Justin Jefferson's thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. So last year at this time, Justin Jefferson was actually ahead of that pace. Yeah. And he didn't make it. Had one game, uh, had a bad game in, in Lambeau. Uh, and then the Vikings rested him for half of a game and had like a kind of fake last game that didn't actually matter any for anything for week 18. So mm -hmm. if the Dolphins are in a similar spot where week 18 is not particularly useful to them. They might sit starters and it ruins that. And it also just takes one bad game. They've got the jets coming up and sauce Gardner and all that. So really there is still hope for us way. not to see this. I don't want it. I don't want to see it. I am. I'm being a biased Vikings fan. I want Justin Jefferson to be the first person to do it. I don't want to see it. I'm rooting Man. against Tyree kill emphatically for petty and personal reasons. Uh, how about him just getting the, the receiving record, right? Not breaking 2000 no. yards, but surpassing Calvin Johnson. No, no. So not okay. Oh no, that would, that would harm lions fans. So actually I think I've been, okay with it. uh, my yike, uh, we're going to step outside the NFL for this goes to the college football playoff committee and Boo. its existence. they should disband. That is yeah. my opinion is that it should not exist as an entity. Uh, we don't need style points anymore. Nope. What is this? The BCS. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who uh, are, are not, who do not follow college football, I don't follow college football at all. I have no opinion on the Florida state Seminoles uh, and, and how much they deserve to like be a top four team or whatever. But I do know they won all their games yep. and a, any playoff format where you can win all your games as a power five school. Like I get it when it's, you know, Liberty, but as a power five school, you can win all of your games. And because your quarterback got injured, not be seen as a possible championship contender, get out of here with that. I yeah. hate that because yeah. for me, it tells me that the play, the college football playoff is not an opportunity for a title. It's an attempt to predict who would win it. And the yeah. college football committee should not be predicting. They should be awarding opportunities. Yeah. In the NFL, we have seen, Backups take over Nick Foles, right? We've Nick seen Foles, yep. at Hostetler's all the way down, right? Every once in a while, somebody does it that you don't expect to do it. Upsets happen in college football too, right? Bama just beat Georgia. That was an upset. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as, yeah, the SEC winner should get in, Alabama didn't win all their games. Right. Florida State won all their games and continued to win games even with their quarterback out. It tells that backup quarterback that you there's nothing you could have done and that you simply aren't good enough based on reputation. Yeah. And it tells every single other person on Florida state that without Jordan Travis, you are not good enough and there's nothing you could have done to change it because you can't win 14 games on a 13 game schedule. And that's what they would have had to do. I think it's an absolutely dreadful way to treat a competitive sport and it takes the competition out of it. You show up to compete, you show up to win and it seems like Florida State got out because they don't have enough BCS style points. It, yeah. it would be uh, like if I mean, like, could you imagine that kind of thing happening in the NFL to Steelers, right? Who yeah. I think they own the the five seed in the AFC as as of this moment. Uh, yeah, they own the five seed. Could you imagine if you go? Yeah, but like Kenny Pickett's hurt now, and you guys were kind of fraudulent. Yeah. No, <laughs> right. we're gonna the bills. Yeah, yeah. Get out bills of here. Keep going. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Win your games, I think, is what you should do if you want to make the college football playoff and put Bama in the, I don't know, the Tostitos Bowl or whichever one let, lets them go up against, like, I don't know, Oregon or Iowa yeah. or whatever. Yeah. If I'm the uh, if I'm the FCC, I'm getting out of the ACC. If I'm, if sorry, if I'm FSU, I'm getting out of the ACC. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Cause that, oh, yeah. That, Which that they are going. The aren't they going to be part of the SEC next year? Uh, not that I know uh I don't oh, remember. I don't, someone else. That might be a locked on ACC uh, question. Oh, you go yeah. check out with Candace Cooper and Kenton Gibbs. They'll know all about that. But I would, if they're not already set to do it, I would get out there quick, fast, and in a hurry. And um, 
Well, Luke, much like a uh, an undefeated Power Five Florida State University team, uh, we're out. We got to go. Um, uh, <laughs> that's going to wrap up Nailed it. today's episode <laughs> of the Locked On NFL. Oh my gosh! Come for come for the weirdness. Stay for the weirdness. That that's Tuesdays. Locked <laughs> Tuesdays on Locked On NFL, baby. <laughs> that's how we roll. We appreciate everybody for coming through for another episode of Locked On NFL, and of course for making us your first listen each and every day. Coming up tomorrow, you've got Chris Carter and James Rapine. They're going to be talking about the biggest questions around the NFL, tackling some of the biggest stories. So you won't want to miss that. And of course, Luke and I will be back next week. Appreciate you as always. Thank you very much for tuning in for another episode of Locked On NFL, part of Locked On Podcast Network. You're team every day.